So Money in the Bank has come and gone. What an absolute show put on by all the performers in WWE and what an amazing show put on by the crowd in the London O2 Arena. Let's break down all of what was Money in the Bank. Guys, before we get into the video, don't forget to put the bell on, like, and subscribe to the channel. And if you feel like leaving a comment, leave a comment about whose ring gear was the best at Money in the Bank. Now, on to the video. Starting off with the men's Money in the Bank match. Listen, first off, I'm going to talk about Logan Paul and Ricochet. This was what we expected from these two, but that was one of the scariest spots I have ever seen in my life. I am very impressed with the development of Logan Paul. Yes, I have made it very evidently clear that I am not a Logan Paul fan, but like Triple H said in the press conference, this man has no business being this good this early. Um, Logan Paul, Ricochet, and the entire crew really performed on the highest level, which I really think they needed to because of the environment they were in in the London O2. But guys, I hate to say I told you so, it was not gonna be L. A night yeah no it was Damian Priest and I love the storyline that they're building with kind of the collapse of what is now Judgment Day I do see a massive split happening and somehow JD McDonough being involved we've had teasers over the last couple of weeks but Damian Priest I hate to say it was the right pick to be Mr. Money in the Bank. The man has had a phenomenal year with the Judgment Day and individually. Um, the guys in the back, as in WWE Creative and Head Office, are big, 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 big on Damian Priest right now. And it's really cool to potentially see that we're going to get our first Puerto Rican world champion since Pedro Morales in the last 50 years. I, for one, am about that la knight is going to get what he deserves i completely believe that but right now it's damian priest time and i really enjoy it sticking with the judgment day cody rhodes versus dominic mysterio i said in what world did we ever see dom going over on cody rhodes um i think they were just waiting for the return of brock lesnar so this was actually a filler match really decent match pretty much anything cody has done and anyone he's been put with he's made them look like a uh, million bucks and vice versa with guys like seth rollins and brock lesnar have made cody's looks like a million dollars this was a, a time for dom to really embrace that heel persona that he has been working on and i really think he did a great job of it he was hot with the um london crowd and I don't see an issue with this match. It wasn't my favorite match of the night. Don't get me wrong, but I will say it was a decent match for what it needed to be. So Cody Rhodes going over on Dom. I'm 2-0 for the night. The women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Wow. First off, spot fest. Let's talk about Trish Stratus. That woman took more savage bumps in this match alone than I think she took in her entire career when she was feuding with Lita. This woman took a ladder spot on off of a table. She took a weird drop spot where she broke her nose on the rope. She took two or three other ones that aren't coming to my mind right now, but Trish Stratus really showed why she was kind of the pioneer of what the women's division is now. Um, completely impressed with Trish, Trish Stratus. She still can't cut a promo for her life but my god trish absolutely phenomenal job and i can't wait to see where this feud with becky finally ends at SummerSlam. my full pick to win the money in the bank was zelina vega it was a massive long shot i know i said you know she's put in a lot of work um i will swallow my work i will eat my words I really want it to be Zelina Vega, but I originally said I know that it's probably going to be EO Sky. My prediction was Zelina. She put on a great match. She took some really good bumps. That spot with Zoe Stark was impressive. I guess it's just not Zelina's time yet, but good things come to those who wait. Zoe Stark performed very well. Becky and Bailey had a nice little back and forth there, a little bit of history in the feud. I really enjoyed it, but EO Sky came out on top. 
great little situation with the handcuffs and climbing over top of Bailey. I even like the uh, press conference at the end where like Bailey was holding on to the money in the bank a little bit more than EO was. So I'm looking to see what's going to happen with damage control with this. But overall, a really good match put on by the ladies. Gunther and Riddle. I'm really disappointed with this match. It was a good match. Like, I've seen everyone's reviews on it. It was a good match. But from what we have witnessed so far, when it comes to Gunther in a premium live event, this really wasn't it. It was nowhere near Clash. It was nowhere near Mania. And maybe I had a lot of hopes because it was in Europe that they were going to do something similar. But what they did with this match to lead to for me it almost felt like a squash match of riddle and riddle did perform but there wasn't an exuberant amount of offense that riddle really put out and it kind of bugged me a little bit but we all saw what it was going to officially lead to and that was the return of drew mcintyre now, I did say in my predictions video that Drew was going to return at the end of the Seth Finn Balor match. I was wrong on that, but I love the idea of this storyline running five weeks, a good five week build right into SummerSlam where it will be Drew versus Gunther for the IC title. And I will have my predictions for that the week before SummerSlam. I can't believe I am going to be able to witness that live. Oh, so good. But I did predict Gunther to go over on Riddle and the Drew prediction. So I'm going to take uh, two check marks on that. So we're four for uh, four and one. Um, Ronda Rousey. And the women's tag match was the swerve of the night. I did not expect that at all. I am all about this because obviously this has been filmed a little later in the week. We've had Monday Night Raw and Shayna Baszler cut the promo of her life absolutely burying Ronda Rousey. I'm all about this. I might even go get some Shayna merch because that woman just proved that she is a sports entertainer and can work the mic and work in the ring really well. We have new women's tag champions. Uh, we'll see where that goes, but I am all about this Ronda Shayna feud going into SummerSlam. I got that one wrong, so we're four and two going into Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. Now with a potential of a cash in from Damian Priest, let's break this down. <laughs> Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, seven years in the making, Finn Balor has got this massive chip on his shoulder. It is one of those ones where I wish there was no shenanigans and they were just allowed to go but we did have Damian Priest come down with the money in the bank and kind of distract both guys but Finn was more the one distracted and we ended up with a stomp by Seth and Seth getting the one two three clean on Finn and then the back and forth between Finn and Damian Priest am I happy the way this match ended no am I surprised no I think it's what the match needed I would have just preferred to see these guys go at it and kind of end this feud but obviously there's a potential for a triple threat now at SummerSlam breakup of the Judgment Day, maybe JD McDonough getting involved again, really good match. Not the way I would have booked it, but whatever it is what it is we have so many storylines beginning to intertwine in professional wrestling and WWE right now. I am not against it. I am for it. I am here about it. I can't wait to see where everything goes uh, on the road to SummerSlam and into the fall. The Bloodline Civil War. Everyone, I think, is now of the mindset. This storyline for the last three and a half years is one of the, if not the greatest professional wrestling storyline of all time. And that that's hard for me to say growing up in the Attitude Era where we had Austin McMahon, Rock Austin, Austin McMahon, or uh, Rock McMahon. We had the Ministry. We had Triple H and the Authority, and we had all those great storylines, but they only lasted about 18 months. But this Bloodline one is just something that you just don't get anymore in pro wrestling because people don't have the attention span to deal with it. 
Now, here's my point on this. This was like perfect script, something I don't even think Hollywood could write. I sat there watching this entire match and the little nuances the Brock Lesnar plate on the title the low blow of from Jay to Roman during the kick out running it back to Roman versus Jay the first time there was so many little sequences that just brought the entire thing back told the whole storyline in one match it was beautiful First off, it was beautiful. Now let's be men about this for a second. It was a war. These guys were in a war. Solo, the story between Solo and Roman and like the tags and Roman kind of disrespecting Solo. Everything about this was great. This was a six star match. I am of the opinion this was a six, six out of five. Six out of five, I will give it. Um, but I will say this right now, Roman getting pinned and Roman being the one that is perfected the 2.9 out of three second kick out i still thought he was kicking out the crowd oh my god i regret selling my tickets like it was perfect i almost forgot something we had a surprise the return of john cena and this was interesting because the pop was incredible. The crowd was incredible. This was a 15, 20 minute segment, but this is my problem with this. And I, I am not doing this to hate on John Cena. Please, everyone come for me in the comments if you want. But I am not doing this to hate on John Cena. John Cena came out and said a lot in that promo with and also said nothing at the same time. He focused on oh can we bring wrestlemania to london still never said wrestlemania was coming to london then grayson waller comes out there was a nice little back and forth which we, a lot of people are rumoring grayson waller and john cena at SummerSlam. cool if they build it that way i'm okay with it but it was just a very weird segment because nothing was really there was no finish to the segment it was just okay so We've wanted WrestleMania in London since the 90s, and you've just come and teased it without saying we're getting it. So that was where my gripe with that whole segment was. But guys, what was your opinion on Money in the Bank? Because really, it for me was phenomenal. I think it was one of the best premium live events we have had this year, and that's including WrestleMania. Um, but guys, if you've made it this far in our first YouTube video, please leave a comment about where you want to see WrestleMania go next. Guys, my name is Mr. Tash. Check all my links in my bio, and don't forget to click sub put the bell on and subscribe to this channel. This is going to be consistent videos four times a week moving forward. Can't wait to see this journey. Thank you so much. Be good people.